we will talk about uh, 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 intuitionism as a theory. And uh, uh, in our conversation, in our uh, little talk about uh, intuitionism, we came across this notion of self-evidence. Now, uh, what is self-evidence? We, we briefly recapitulating what we meant by intuitionism is that well, uh, that the moral truths are, uh, there are objective moral truths and these truths are uh, uh, self-evident. Uh, it, it is definitely not to be understood as, uh, in being mysteriously intuited by individuals, but that it is self-evident. Now, we will dwell a little bit on this notion of self-evidence. How does this notion of self-evidence, make a uh, uh, intuitionism a sound moral theory, not a mysterious justification for uh, moral truths. Now, what is meant by self-evidence? Well, uh, if you take a look at the slide, the fundamental prima facie principles are known with certainty now if this is to be taken uh, with uh, ross uh, theory uh, well, uh, if we quickly recapitulate what Ross meant, that well, we had a uh, 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 Ross proposed a group of prima facie duties, uh, duties that were uh, clearly uh, evident. But how to choose among these duties was the uh, discretion of the agent or of the individual. Now, these duties are self-evident uh, according to Ross. But, how do we choose between these duties, or if there is a conflict between duties, or if there is a hierarchy that has to be maintained, or uh, brought about, how is that to be done? And that has to be done by the agent. Now, moral truths being self-evident, meaning that we have an intuitive, or if I, uh, if I may drop the use of the term for uh, its association with mysterious, uh, unscientific thinking, uh, what we mean by uh, this intuitive ability or self-evidence. Let us take an example, and this example is uh, uh, from Plato's dialogue, and uh, Plato postulates, asks a slave, a uh, slave of that time, which was supposed to be uh, very low on uh, knowledge, and uh, um, was perhaps mostly doing manual work, to go from point A to point B, right. Let us uh, take a look at the slide, what briefly was the position. Now, say this is point A, and this is point B. Now, there were the slave was given two options. He takes this, this is root 1, and he takes this is root 2. Now, which slave is given the task to go from A to B? Which route should he take? 1 or 2? Now, slave uh, in that dialogue chose the route 1 instead of 2. Now, this goes uh, also, just uh, this also corroborates the uh, mathematical axiom that uh, two sides of a triangle are together longer than the third side. Now, this is what uh, uh, the, the Plato tried to show that, well, this slave, who has not been trained in mathematics, arithmetic or geometry of that time, still chose the first route, the route which is shorter, uh, thereby indicating that, well, uh, he does have implicitly the knowledge that, well, two sides of a triangle are longer than uh, the third side of a triangle. So, that is why he chose a shorter route. Now, this seems to be pretty obvious, and uh, the profoundity of this uh, claim can be uh, understood, if we uh, look a little deeper. Now, the, what Plato is trying to prove, 
or uh, demonstrate by this is that, well these fundamental truths of uh, uh, geometry of knowledge are there implicitly in the human uh, framework, in the human mind. It is only through the education that these are made uh, conscious, that these are made aware, um, uh, made aware consciously. In fact, I am reminded of Vivekananda's quote, which said that, well, uh, education is the manifestation of perfection, already present in man. So, well, this uh, went ahead to uh, talk about that, well, uh, knowledge already resides, or uh, we have certain uh, framework for our knowledge, in our, we are pre-equipped with it, and this is only made conscious by the process of education. Now, this went ahead further to uh, uh, demarcate uh, two schools of, two dominant or uh, major schools of philosophy between rationalism and empiricism. One claiming that, well, experience is the source of knowledge, empiricism, and rationalism claiming that, well, most of our knowledge comes as a part of our uh, framework. Now, we'll not, without getting into that debate, why uh, we talk about this example now, is in context of this claim of self-evidence. Now, Ross uh, was a, a, a ethicist, who went ahead to claim that, well, the self-evidence that we talk about, uh, moral truths, comprises in the framework of uh, human uh, uh, mentality. That is, just as the way mathematical truths form a part of, uh, uh, what uh, comprises of uh, the human framework, just as we do not question or it comes into uh, obvious, to, uh, it, it, it is obvious to us that two sides of a triangle are together, uh, longer than the third side. Now, that's this kind of an appeal that such an arithmetic or geometric claim has, is the same kind of appeal that a moral claim has. Looking for a justification, or an experiential empirical justification for it, is futile, or uh, is irrelevant, or is not required to justify this. So, just as uh, mathematics uh, uh, held as one of the purest forms of knowledge, because it is uh, uh, mostly intuitively evident in that sense, not a mysterious sense, that because it is a part of our framework of approaching the world, of the, of the human uh, mentality, that needs no further proof. It is self-evident, just as the truths of mathematics. If you take a look at what I am trying to say, is that just as axioms of mathematics are self evident so are the moral truths self-evident. And this is the claim of intuitionism. A truth is, uh, uh, what it says, is that a truth is self-evident, if understanding it is sufficient for being justified in believing it. One knows the proposition provided, one believes it on the basis of understanding it. Such truths are self-evident, but that does not mean they are obvious. They are evident to those sufficient mental abilities, uh, with mental abilities and experience, who have reflected properly about them. Well, what this simply means, is that well, uh, now these self-evident truths, that uh, the intuitionists talk about and the mathematicians talk about, are not known by uh, uh, everybody, in the sense that it is realized only by those, who have reflected, or who have uh, grappled with it. So, this uh, axiom, that the two sides of a uh, triangle, uh, are uh, together longer than the first side, or that uh, a line is the shortest distance between two points. Now, these are evident, self-evident to the reflecting mind, or to the trained mind. So, we have the primitive ability, uh, to uh, 
register this, but it is only with reflection or training or education that that is known to us. So, moral truths in the same sense that well, we cannot expect that somebody with uh, an unrefined thinking or a primitive way of uh, instinctual thinking will have the same level of uh, 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 knowledge of moral uh, objectivity according to intuitionists as someone with a very refined way of thinking. This happens only when uh, uh, reflection and ad, uh, advanced thinking takes place. So, this is uh, what the intuitionists want to say by self evidence that this is reflection that takes place only when uh, we find that uh, uh, the agent has reflected upon it, has been trained in it and has consciously reached the uh, realization of the same. Well, now let us talk about uh, another meta ethical uh, classification that we talked about earlier, which is called ethical non cognitivism. Now, ethical non cognitivism claims that uh, ethical judgments do not express that ethical judgments do not express beliefs or mental states apt to be assessed in terms of truth and falsity. Well, what, what is meant here? Well, first, what is a, uh, a proposition? Let us say, a proposition is a statement or any sentence that can be assigned a truth value. Now, what makes uh, an ethical proposition, an ethical judgment is a proposition, only if it can be assigned the value of truth or falsity. Now, the ethical non cognitivist says that well, this is incorrect. So, ethical judgment is not a proposition and this value of truth and falsehood cannot be uh, assigned to an ethical judgment. Now, let us take a look at two sentences. One, murder is wrong there were 21 cases of murder reported in uh, city x in year n. Now, can this pay attention on the two uh, sentences written. Now, first is murder is wrong Two, there were 21 cases of murder reported in city x in year n. Now, can we uh, verify this? Now, how would you judge? Well, can this be true or false? No matter whether it is true or false, how would we perhaps verify it? We would go and check up with the police records and find out that well, if this is true or not. So, this can be made true or false on verification, but what about sentence 1? Can this be given truth or false value? Now, according to the non cognitivists, no, this cannot be given the truth value of true or false. So, that means, murder is wrong is a value claim that 
but it is non cognitive. What is meant by non cognitive? Non cognitive truth value cannot be assigned. So, now to start with, well let, let us uh, look at those two sentences or think about those two sentences again. Now, murder is wrong, why can it not be uh, 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 treated as a moral fact? Well, the non cognitivists say that well, uh, any moral judgment is in fact not a judgment, it is perhaps an expression of feeling or whatever it be, it cannot be uh, granted a truth value, because it is uh, a fiction, it is a feeling, it is, uh, it is does not have a correlate to justify it as right and wrong. Well, uh, there are various forms of uh, ethical non-cognitivism. We have uh, emotivism, as we have talked about in the earlier uh, sessions. There is also quasi realism, prescriptivism. So, these are all forms of ethical non cognitivism. The third meta ethical position that we talked about that well, moral judgments are uh, cannot be falsified or uh, proved to be true. So, they cannot be a truth value assigned to them. So, this is what ethical non cognitivism is trying to say. Now, uh, let us take an example of uh, the same sentence that we talked about, that murder is wrong. Now, as we said murder is wrong, according to the emotivist is just an expression of one's feeling to or uh, as a reaction. as a reaction to the notion or concept of murder. This is according to the emotivists, and because it is a feeling, not even a belief, not a belief, there cannot be a true false cannot be marked true or false. Beliefs can differ or beliefs may contradict each other. May contradict other beliefs, but feelings are inexplicable and uncontradictable. in the sense that well, uh, feelings can be, uh, uh, can differ from uh, person to person, and there is no way of saying that well, these feelings contradict each other. The propositions that the feeling uh, uh, hint at, may contradict, but feelings that way are not uh, contradictable, according to the non cognitivists, uh, particularly the emotivist version of the non cognitivist school. So, we see ethical non cognitivism as a third alternative, which is trying to take away or which claims that there is no objectivity to moral claims and uh, uh, moral claims for whatever purpose utility they may have, may be to exhort action, may be to bring people on uh, one side, but it is merely fictional or psychological and it is not. Uh, true. So, we uh, talked about three versions of uh, ethics, we talked about naturalistic ethics, which based ethics on uh, uh, three versions or three meta, uh, vers uh, meta ethical foundations of ethics. Uh, naturalism, which talked about equating natural properties with uh, uh, ethical properties, and ethical properties were meaningful. Second was non naturalism or intuitionism, 
uh, that ethical properties uh, are meaningful, but only they cannot be equated to non-ethical uh, uh, properties. And therefore, the grounding for the ethical properties are on self-evidence or uh, uh, the uh, as, as intuitionists say. The third is the non-cognitive school, which still hold that well, there are uh, ethical uh, judgments, but these judgments are uh, cannot be uh, regarded as true or false, and they are non-cognitive. Uh, the balance of it, if one denies even the existence of moral judgments. Now, uh, the non-cognitivists say that there are ethical claims, but these claims cannot be um, uh, verified, cannot be made true or false. But there is a fourth uh, uh, foundation, which is nihilism or moral nihilism, that claims that well, there are no moral judgments, and the, this belongs to the category of amoralism. So, uh, this is a denial of the very ethical domain that we have mm -hmm, talked about. So, this basically sums up three of the uh, meta ethical foundations in uh, uh, classifying meta ethics, uh, over which various applied theories have been built. So, for example, emotivism is built on non cognitivism. Uh, utilitarianism is built on naturalism. So, this is the fundamental meta ethical positions that come to uh, prescribe these uh, or come to lay the foundation of further moral theories.